Bird in Washington, President Bush has arrived in Rome to pay his respects to Pope John Paul II as millions pour into the city for the Friday funeral. That's our lead story, and we'll have these reports. The Da Vinci Code's just a novel, but what you've heard about Opus Dei isn't all fiction. I'm Richard Roth in Rome. I'm Lee Cowan in Baghdad, where Saddam Hussein got a perk today. He was allowed to watch TV. I'll tell you why. I'm Jim Stewart. The IRS has a special hit team this tax season. Are you on their list? We've got the details. A patent for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I'm Anthony Mason with the case of the PB&J. This is the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. The Cardinals of the Roman Catholic Church decided today that the secret conclave to elect the next Pope will begin one week from Monday. But Rome is bracing now for what is becoming the largest spontaneous gathering of visitors that Rome or any other city has ever seen. President Bush took the official U.S. delegation tonight directly to St. Peter's Basilica and John Roberts begins our coverage. They'd all had audiences with the Pope, and tonight, President Bush, his father, and Bill Clinton said a personal final farewell to John Paul II. They were among the first of some 200 heads of state here for Friday's funeral. Rome is on a high security alert tonight. The area over the Vatican was already a no-fly zone, but that decree has been extended to the entire city. With five million people now expected, the largest event Rome has ever seen, and the ceremony outdoors in St. Peter's Square, it would seem a tempting target. But Rome's commissioner for security believes terrorists wouldn't dare attack the funeral. Because there is an atmosphere, a special atmo atmosphere, that uh, I think uh, they can consider not useful. Authorities tonight cut off the line to see the Pope, disappointing faithful who just missed the deadline. As if it could have possibly grown any longer than yesterday, today it did. The wait for the last people online may stretch to 24 hours. Miliosa Bukati came from Poland. She's never experienced anything like this. It's beyond description. The pictures will, you know, will speak by, by themselves. And pictures are what many people wanted to take home. In a bizarre scene of medieval tradition meets high tech, they snap shots of John Paul II lying in state with their cell phone cameras. A few seconds with the Pope made a memory to last a lifetime. There will be no cameras, no cell phones, no outside communication when the Cardinals gather April 18th for their secret conclave. The Vatican's former governor predicts the next pope will not be the globetrotter John Paul II was. He was only 58 years old when he was elected pope. I would not think the next pope would be that young, although who knows. Uh, so it'd be hard to, to continue the type of, uh, of activity and travel that he, he has done. The Vatican disclosed the contents of Pope John Paul II's will today. What few earthly possessions he had, he left to his closest aides, people that he called his family. But the Pope did not reveal who he named his so-called Cardinal in Pectore, the mystery cardinal who he'd always kept secret. Bob? John, help me out here. What, what is the secret cardinal? Well, in pectore means uh, in the chest or in the heart. And there's a cardinal that he named a couple of years ago that he kept secret for fear that if the name became public, he might suffer persecution at the hands of an authoritarian government. Bob? So he's in some country, we don't know where he is, but where he might be in danger. There's speculation that the uh, cardinal in pectore was a prelate from uh, China where the Catholic Church isn't the most welcome church in the world. Bob? Okay, thank you very much, John. We want to take a minute here to show you something amazing, just how long this line of mourners was today before they cut it off. This is a view from space. You can see the line from the front of the basilica. The line winds back through St. Peter's Square, then down Vatican City's main boulevard. It coils through its streets and alleys before branching out into Rome, across, up, and down the Tiber River. Sheila McVicker now on the challenge of keeping order up and down this line. One intersection, a huge and growing crowd, and here alone more than 30 police and volunteers needed to keep order. 
Multiply this by hundreds of thousands of pilgrims and you get an idea of just how enormous this challenge is. This is the largest security and logistics operation Rome has ever seen and there have been very few like it elsewhere. Special trains, 39 of them today, brought tens of thousands of the faithful to the city. One million free bottles of water kept them hydrated and kept most of them on their feet. Medical teams, there are now thousands of doctors, nurses and paramedics here, say they treated one person every three minutes for heat exhaustion. Rome, officials say, can take no more. The capacity of the town is, is this. Town. Rome has three million habitants, so we are doubling. <laughs> the, the, the population, so. Two days before the funeral, and there are already so many people here, the authorities now say they're going to have to stop buses and trains full of pilgrims from even reaching the city. This is the nerve center, the operations room of the National Police. From the Red Cross to air defense, all those involved are represented here. The real-time pictures show them how the crowd is building. Tonight, Italian authorities began asking their own people to stay at home. In Poland tonight, the first trainloads of pilgrims prepared to depart for Rome. It's very important for us because Papa, we love him very much. But even as the trains pulled away, Italian authorities said it was very likely the Polish pilgrims will be stopped miles outside of Rome, a city simply too crowded. Sheila McVicker, CBS News, Rome. Another American soldier in Iraq has died in action. The U.S. military says he was killed when his patrol was ambushed in Baghdad. Also today, after two months of bickering, Iraqi representatives finally elected a president who will in turn select a prime minister. Lee Cowan is in Baghdad and has more on that. Wahid. With the votes being tallied Wahid. on a blackboard, the proceedings weren't exactly high-tech, nor were they high drama. But they were historic. Iraq now has its first democratically elected president in 50 years, Jalal Taliban, a member of Iraq's long oppressed Kurdish minority and one of Saddam Hussein's fiercest enemies. So long the underdogs, Kurds celebrated their victory today even though it was largely symbolic. Talibani has two weeks to name a prime minister, likely to be Ibrahim al Jafari from Iraq's majority Shiite community. He's the one who will actually wield most of the power in Iraq's new government. Still, though, it was hard for Talibani to hide his glee at assuming the very same title that Saddam Hussein still claims to hold. And speaking of Saddam Hussein, he was actually forced to watch those proceedings live on television from his jail cell this morning. Officials thought that it would be instructive for him to see that he was, in fact, a prisoner, not the president, and that the country is actually getting along pretty well without him. Bob? So, Lee, now we have these new officers uh, in place. When are they going to start governing? When is this government going to take over? Well, in short, uh, not for a while. I mean, this is still a, an interim government. Still doesn't have a prime minister. We still don't have a cabinet yet. And we don't have a constitution. Uh, so the prime minister's first job is to get a, a, a committee in place that will draw up that constitution. They hope to have it drawn up sometime by the middle to late August, and then it will go to voters uh, in, uh, in sometime in October. Okay, thank you very much, Lee. A U.S. military helicopter crashed and burned today in Afghanistan, killing at least 16 people. This one happened during a sandstorm 80 miles southwest of Kabul as the Chinook heavy lift chopper was returning from a mission. The U.S. military confirms that four Americans were killed, but Afghan officials at the crash site say most, if not all, of the dead were Americans. Prince Renier of Monaco will be buried alongside his movie star, Princess Grace Kelly. The prince died today at the age of 81 after years of failing health. Millions of people watched on TV when Prince Renier married Philadelphia's Grace Kelly in 1956. She died in a car crash 23 years ago. Prince Albert, the couple's only son, now takes the throne. Here on Capitol Hill, ethics questions dogging House Republican leader Tom DeLay multiplied again today. Front page stories in the New York Times and the Washington Post had new allegations of foreign trips paid for by lobbyists and also more than a half million dollars in salary paid to DeLay's wife and daughter by his political action and campaign committees. 
Gloria Borger is at the uh, Capitol again tonight. Uh, Gloria, it is now just one thing after another uh, with Tom DeLay. Uh, what's going to happen here? Well, at this point, Bob, House Republican leaders continue to publicly support Tom DeLay. But privately, it's becoming a very different story. We spoke with one uh, House senior Republican today, and he told us that if you were to take a secret poll inside that Republican caucus, you would find an awful lot of disgruntled Republicans and a lot of Republicans who also believe that Tom DeLay's effectiveness is going to be diminished by these ethics charges. Well, now we know there's a grand jury down in uh, Texas that's investigating uh, Tom DeLay. We don't know what's going to happen down there. But is he going to be able to hold his power now, do you think? Or is this going to be too much? Well, you know, privately, a lot of members are asking that very same question, Bob. There is the question also of what this ethics committee is going to do. And right now, nobody knows because they're deadlocked. All right. Thank you very much, Gloria. The uh, Speaker of the House, Dennis Hastert, had surgery today for kidney stones at the Bethesda Naval Hospital in Maryland. Doctors said the Illinois Republican, who is 63, is recovering, but he had to cancel plans to attend the Pope's funeral. And coming up next, a revealing look at a secretive and powerful group within the Roman Catholic Church, the one many of you know from the Da Vinci Code. That is our inside story tonight. But first... CBS News honors fallen heroes, William Brennan. He was a fun-loving guy. He'd do things like ride a bike with the family cat on his head. He achieved his dream of becoming an Army helicopter pilot and after 9-11 flew surveillance over New York. Brennan killed in Iraq in a chopper crash. Once said he didn't fear death, he feared not being there for his kids. Heart attacks aren't always fatal. To help save lives during a heart attack, most doctors recommend the full dose of aspirin like that in Genuine Bear. Just one Genuine Bear has enough aspirin to help save your life. The more you know, the more you trust Bear. Sometimes all the right moves can't give high cholesterol the slip. If you're at risk and diet and exercise aren't enough, adding Lipitor can help lower your bad cholesterol 39 to 60 percent. And Lipitor has proven benefits for your heart. Lipitor is not for everyone, including people with liver problems and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor about other medications you are taking or if you experience muscle pain or weakness as they may be a sign of a serious side effect. So take the next step. Ask your doctor about the benefits of Lipitor. Did you see that? You think we should do something? Experts say it is some kind of message. I'm thinking we need to get the big lots. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right now, find closeout prices on all kinds of lawn and garden, outdoor and patio items. All the hot new closeouts for spring are at Big Lots now. From patio tables and chairs to garden lights and umbrellas, amazingly low closeout prices are everywhere. Deals this good can't last long, so hurry in for best selection. Big Lots, what's your deal today? Got gas? Pressure? Bloating? Tums doesn't treat gas. To treat gas, use Gas X. For fast, powerful relief. <sighs> Popcorn? Ooh. Gas X beats the bloat, and acids don't. This allergy season, ask your doctor about something different. Singular. While many seasonal allergy medicines block histamine, Singular works differently by blocking leukotrienes, an underlying cause of seasonal allergy symptoms. And one prescription Singular helps relieve a broad range of seasonal allergy symptoms for a full 24 hours. Side effects are generally mild and vary by age, and may include headache, ear infection, sore throat, and upper respiratory infection. Singular, a different way to treat seasonal allergies. As Roman Catholic cardinals prepare to choose a new pope, one influential group of Catholics is drawing a lot of outside attention. It is the secretive movement called Opus Dei, Latin for the word of or work of God, which plays a key fictional role in the best-selling thriller, The Da Vinci Code. 
Richard Roth in Rome has the inside story. At least two of the cardinals who will pick the next pope are members of Opus Dei, and from the Spanish cardinal now temporarily in charge to John Paul's spokesman at the Vatican, many more here have close links to the conservative Catholic institution. It has had unprecedented power under Pope John Paul II, and there is no way it wants to lose that power in another papacy. With more than 80,000 members worldwide, wealthy and influential in politics and business, Opus Dei is described by its critics as sinister. It is a secretive organization that is not subject to any accountability or control. And organizations like that always have the potential for danger. In the pot-boiling bestseller, The Da Vinci Code, there's no doubt Opus Dei's the heavy, implicated in crime, conspiracy, and corporal punishment meant to mimic the suffering of Christ. And even its followers admit there is some fact in the fiction. Anyone who's familiar with Catholic traditions of penance would not at all be surprised by the members of Opus Dei using what are known as the syllabus and the discipline, or, you know, a spiked chain and uh, a small whip. Father John Walk insists there's nothing menacing in the group's mission. It's about lay people living very human lives, at the same time seeking heroic holiness. But as one follower put it, it's not Catholic light. It could be that's contributed to Opus Dei's image problem. This unremarkable looking building on a Rome street, for instance, could easily inspire the imagination of a writer of fiction. Because what word except hidden could describe the ornate chapel built like a vault deep inside? Is this place the holiest place to Opus Dei? This chapel has a certain significance for us because... And, and that's the significance. Yes, St. Josemaria is buried underneath the altar here. In this that's Opus Dei's founder, preserved in a silver coffin. It is a group with deep interest in who will be chosen to steer the church at a rare time when influence can count. Bob? So what you're saying here, Richard, is this is a very secret organization, but perhaps it's not the sinister organization that was portrayed in the Da Vinci Code. Well, it certainly has a secret aura, but I think what troubles many outsiders is that these are deeply devoted, deeply religious people who are also very committed to extending their influence beyond religion to social, business, and political life. All right. Thank you very much, Richard. Coming up next tonight, uh, Making the Big Guys Pay, our special Money Watch series on taxes continues. Tonight's Money Watch segment is sponsored by Mutual of Omaha. Begin today. When Walter got hurt on the job, he was out of work for almost a year. We would have lost this house if it hadn't been for the disability insurance. It's insurance that, uh... He didn't think that we needed Mutual of Omaha. She always brings that up. Begin today. For you, my sweet. Uh -huh. I see you are overcome with love. Achoo! Or could it be congestion and other seasonal nasal allergy symptoms? Your congestion will not keep us apart. Uh, only Nasonex is clinically proven to both treat and help prevent most seasonal nasal allergy symptoms, including congestion. Side effects were generally mild and included headache, viral infection, sore throat, nosebleeds, and coughing. Love means never having to say you are congested. To treat and help prevent most seasonal nasal allergy symptoms, Nasonex is the one. Talk to your doctor. Want to know a secret? Some otherwise intelligent people don't always eat right. That's why there's Delicious Ensure, a source of complete balanced nutrition, vitamins, minerals, food energy. If you don't eat right, eat smart. Ensure, nutrition for a healthier you. Who can grow a spectacular garden? Now, everyone can. With miracle Grow Shake and Feed Plant Food. A few shakes is all it takes to feed plants continuously for up to three full months. The perfect food, the right amount. It's the mistake-proof way to grow plants twice as big. Guaranteed. You don't have to be a great gardener to have a great garden. All you need is shake and feed. Right now, if you're taking medication for arthritis pain, the facts can be hard to get a grip on. We can't tell you if your prescription puts you at risk. Only your doctor can. 
But what we can tell you is that no other pain reliever is safer than Tylenol when used as directed, and that Tylenol arthritis pain works as well as prescription ibuprofen. Hopefully that will give you something to hold on to. I'm Mother Nature. The professionals at A-Plus Lawn and Landscaping care about your outdoors. With their exclusive lawn application system, A-Plus provides a quality product with controlled delivery. Just add water. From above or when the clouds go away with the sprinkler system. Starting a new life or inviting an old friend to a new place. A-Plus Landscaping can make your outdoors your dream place. Always be good to your mother. A-Plus Lawn and Landscaping. On the CBS Money Watch, lower oil prices sent blue chip stock prices higher for the second straight day. The Dow gained 27 points. The Nasdaq lost a fraction. According to the latest estimate from the government, Americans owe more than $300 billion a year in unpaid federal taxes. With the deadline for filing income tax returns coming up fast, the IRS auditors say they're out to make it harder for at least one group of earners to get away with it. Jim Stewart has that tonight in our special Money Watch series on taxes. Disgraced corporate CEOs who pilfered their own companies have done more than just provide some good morality stories for the media. Don't push, guys, don't push. Get out of the way. Guys. They've also awakened a sleeping giant. Because here in the U.S. Mint, appropriately enough, on the third floor in this sea of cubicles, the Internal Revenue Service has set up a special unit to hunt one animal exclusively, the American corporate fat cat. Over the last few years, we've seen an increase in the amount of behaviors on the part of high wealth individuals and corporations taking steps, extraordinary measures to avoid paying tax. Those that have the most tend to cheat the most? I believe they have perhaps more opportunity and in some cases more desire. Stung by hearings about their heavy handedness in the late 1990s, the IRS virtually got out of the audit business for several years, but they're back. Audits of high income taxpayers, those earning over $100,000, topped 195,000 last year, a 40% increase. This year looks bigger and more than 3,000 cases were referred for criminal prosecution, a 20% jump. And the IRS makes no bones about why they're concentrating on the high rollers. As bank robber Willie Sutton said, that's where the money is. Tax consultant Art Auerbach has seen it firsthand. Now, I'm not saying the IRS is here to make a profit, but the chances of finding things are greater on a larger return. The tax rate is higher, therefore the adjustments produce more revenue. The IRS even has what it calls a dirty dozen list of things they look for on high income tax returns. If this applies to you, listen up. Is there any one thing on these high roller tax returns that is going to catch your attention right away? Transferring stock options to a family partnership over which they still have control with the intent of avoiding or deferring tax. Is that a fairly common thing? We, um, we're focusing on that now. That's an understatement. In fact, the IRS has already identified some corporate execs trying that dodge and has told them, we know who you are and we know where the money is. Jim Stewart, CBS News, Washington. And still to come, the U.S. Patent Office is swamped with applications, many of them downright silly. Oh, hey, hi. I'm Digger. Don't mind me, I'm just a dermatophyte. You know, a nail infection. All I want is to get in here and live under your nail. You can't get me with clippers or those surface treatments you try on your own. I'm in too deep in your nail bed. I'll make myself comfortable. Invite a few friends. Well, settle in. Do you have thick, discolored, or flaky nails? Millions of people do. It may be caused by an active live infection. That's why you should ask your doctor about prescription-only Lamisil. Unlike surface treatments, Lamisil is a pill that works through the bloodstream to target and attack the infection at its source, underneath the nail. In fact, you can start to see clearer, healthier nails in just three months. Lamisil isn't for people with liver or kidney problems. In rare cases, serious side effects in the liver or serious skin reactions have occurred, so your doctor may do a simple blood test. Other side effects including headache, diarrhea, indigestion, and rash were generally mild. Ask your doctor about Lamisil. Once daily Lamisil tablets, get your nail infection where it grows. 
can't miss it here, don't you? Oh, it looks so Ooh. good. Try the scampi. Magnifique. Oh, <laughs> we know we used to be regulars. Used to? Frequent heartburn, no matter what. Oh, he's no fun anymore. Well, Prilosec OTC. Prilosec OTC? Look, it's the only OTC that directly shuts down lots of those acid-producing pumps in your stomach. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's why it's the only OTC that can work for 24 hours. With one pill a day. Hey, we could have fun again. Bingo. One, <laughs> one pill a day, 24 hours. Zero heartburn! Uh-oh. Want better allergy relief? Benadryl's proven more effective than the leading allergy medicine at relieving your worst allergy symptoms, like runny nose, sneezing, itchy nose, and watery eyes. Benadryl. Proven more effective. Any luck yet? Uh, not really. Finding a new home shouldn't be this hard. An experienced Remax agent can help you find the perfect home. Nobody sells more real estate than Remax. Swimming is our passion. We never miss a day. Our multivitamin, Centrum Silver. Centrum Silver has a group of essential nutrients that emerging science suggests may help reduce the risk of heart disease. Put your heart into what you love with age-adjusted Centrum Silver. If you're over 50 and take calcium, you may be cheating your bones if you don't get enough vitamin D. Yet Tums has none. Caltrate Chewables has D to help optimize calcium absorption. Get more with great-tasting, fruit-flavored Caltrate Chewables. Tomorrow, what's life like for actress-activist Jane Fonda? In a surprisingly candid interview, hear the intimate details, personal struggles, and profound sadness on The Early Show. Is necessity the mother of invention? Before you answer that, consider just one patent on an invention that wound up in court today. Anthony Mason did. Here's his report. Patents used to be granted for great inventions, like Edison's light bulb, Bell's telephone, or the television. Now, they're given to peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. No kidding. Lawyers for the Smuckers Company were in court today to expand their patent for Uncrustables, a sealed, crustless peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now, this doesn't mean that Smuckers can prevent you from making your own peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But it does mean that they can sue to prevent other companies from making a similar PB&J. Which, according to the patent, has a crimped edge, wherein said crimped edge includes a plurality of spaced apart depressions for increasing a bond of said crimped edge. I will admit I'm not an expert in the technology of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. But, but Professor Adam Jaffe is a patent history. expert. Patented inventions are supposed to be new, he says, and there's nothing new about a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Even the part about crimping it to keep the jelly from leaking out has been, has been done before. The problem, critics say, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office is overwhelmed by applications, more than 375,000 a year and just 3,800 examiners. Well, they caught one examiner after they got rid of him or he quit who had stuffed uh, patents that he was working on in the ceiling of his office because he just <laughs> had to move and get rid of this stuff. Just how easy is it to get a patent? Well, a few years ago, a seven-year-old Minnesota boy applied for a patent for a new side-to-side -side method of swinging on a swing. It was granted. And so, you might ask, if you can patent that, what can't you patent? Whether it's swinging or sandwiches, some say the system has become patently ridiculous. Anthony Mason, CBS News, New York. That's the news. I'm Bob Schieffer, CBS News in Washington. Good night.